The Magic of Empowering Beliefs If you think you can do a thing, or think you can't do a thing, you're right. Henry Ford Are you familiar with the way a circus elephant is trained? When an elephant is small and weak, one leg is tied with a rope to a wooden stake. Initially, the elephant tries to break free, but the rope is too strong and she is convinced that breaking free is impossible. Years later, when the baby elephant has grown to six or seven tons, despite her enormous strength, she is still easily constrained by a light rope and a thin wooden stake. The elephant learns her limitations when she is small and weak, and remains convinced for the rest of her life that what was once true will always be true. She remains imprisoned by her limiting beliefs, when clearly she has the strength to pull that puny stake out of the ground and free herself at any moment. Let's think about that. In what ways are you like a big, powerful elephant who is convinced you are weak and powerless? In what areas of your life are you convinced you can't? It is never true that you can't. The truth is that you possess absolutely infinite power. The truth is that the power of the entire universe is inherent in your life. You can do whatever you believe you can do. So how can you change a limiting belief into an empowering belief? The first step is to acknowledge that a belief is simply a thought you keep thinking. Let's say you want to believe you can do the work you love and be well paid for it. Perhaps you've denied yourself the path your heart is yearning for because you haven't believed sufficiently that you really can have what you want. Okay, it's time to change that. Since a belief is nothing more than a thought you keep thinking, you can easily transform your beliefs by choosing different thoughts. Positive affirmations are a great way to consciously choose thoughts that contribute to your empowerment rather than undermine it. Affirmations work best when they're stated in the positive, in the present tense, and especially when they're stated with feeling. And by the way, it's not necessary to completely believe them at first. Repetition of affirmations leads to belief, and belief leads to physical manifestation. I like to begin affirmations with I am so happy and appreciative now that fill in the blank. Using our example from above, we might say, I am so happy and appreciative now that I'm doing the work I love. I'm well paid for doing the work I love. I get to wake up every morning and do what my heart is calling me to do. Your life experience is limited only by the boundaries of your beliefs. If you've bought into lack and limitation and struggle, if you've been convinced that life is hard and you can't really have what you want, if you've been taught to settle, to accept less than you truly desire, then know this, your new empowering beliefs will set you free. Like the elephant, you continue to prove your belief that you can or that you can't. So make a promise to yourself right here, right now, that you will think empowering yes I can thoughts until yes I can becomes what you know for sure when you know you can you escape the prison of limiting beliefs when you know you can you reclaim your power your joy and your freedom as you free yourself from the prison of limiting beliefs by choosing empowering beliefs you truly can be and do and have whatever you desire the magic of feeling God. The magic of feeling good. There are no rules to this game of life. There is just an incessant quest that is within you to feel good. Abraham Hicks Okay, so I kind of stole this feeling good, feeling God title. It's from the book Everything You Need to Know to Feel God, Good, by Candace Pert, Ph.D. Some of you may remember Pert from the movie what the bleep do we know? Or you may know her from her Hay House workshops. So, yes, I borrowed her feel God, feel good idea because it is so perfect. Feeling God, feeling good, says it all. It clarifies that feeling good and feeling God are one and the same. It's a reminder that when your vibration is sky high, when you're feeling your very best, you are most connected with source, God, your inner being. The better you feel, the stronger your connection. The less good you feel, the less God you feel. Feeling good isn't just physical or emotional, 
but spiritual, which is where God, or whatever aspect of divinity you can relate to, comes in, writes Pert. She reports coming to a place where she understands that feeling good and feeling God are one and the same. Quote, if you're connected to the divine, you'll always feel fine. Adam Helfer Many people ask, what's the point of just feeling good? They say, give me what I want. When I have what I want, then I'll feel good. They say, I'll feel good when. Well, here's the thing. You've got to feel good first. When you feel good, when you feel God first, you align with Source. When you align with Source, you become a vibrational match to your desires, and your desires manifest. Not only is feeling good a magnet for your desires, it's also the real reason you want the job, relationship, money, health, sleek physique, etc. What you really want, every single time, is to feel good. Feel God. Pert concludes, at the end of the day, all people really want to know is how to feel good. And according to Pert, the very best way to feel good, and thus to feel God, is to love, and to start by loving yourself. She suggests, if you want to feel good, I can tell you this, just love. Quote, if you had one goal, and that was to feel good, you would never again need to hear another word from anyone. You would live successfully and happily and in a way of fulfilling your life's purpose ever after. Abraham Hicks More good news from Dr. Pert's research is that humans are hardwired to experience pleasure due to the abundance of receptors for bliss chemicals located in our frontal cortex. Hardwired for pleasure. Bliss chemicals. Yay! When you feel good, feel God, you create a reality that feels good, feels God. When you feel good, feel God, you're a magnet for circumstances that feel good, feel God. If you have an unshakable desire to feel good, feel God, you will make every decision based on whether it feels good, feels God, or not. If you make feeling good, feeling God, your primary focus, you will live from a place of connection. My wish for you, dear friend, is to feel good, feel God all the time, plugged into source, happy and at ease, healthy, wealthy, wise, fulfilled, inspired, passionate, enthusiastic, confident, energized, appreciative, and loving. You're hardwired to experience pleasure. So love yourself and others. Feel as good, feel as God as you can in every moment. Focus on the positive aspects of everyone and everything, and fully savor each joyful experience. Engage the magic of feeling good, feeling God now. The Magic of Focus It's as easy to create a castle as a button. It's just a matter of whether you're focused on a castle or a button. Abraham Hicks the most basic principle of the law of attraction is to focus on what you do want, not on what you don't want. As simple as it sounds, it's not always so easy to do. In fact, if we could focus exclusively on what we do want rather than what we don't want, we would all be manifesting wizards. Even though we know better, we often focus on the problem, on the unpaid bills, on the fear of losing our job, our lover, our health, our looks. This magical musings was inspired by a recent chat with a neighbor. He asked me what I had been doing, and I responded with a list of activities including coaching, writing, having fun with friends, walking on the beach, hiking in the mountains, and basically enjoying a magnificent life. To which my neighbor replied, Well, I guess that's better than being depressed. As strange a comment as I thought that was, it struck me right then and there that the only difference between a magnificent life and a depressed life is where you focus your attention. Whew, that's big. You know the drill. What you focus on expands. Energy flows where attention goes. Even the Jedi wisdom of Star Wars reminds us. Always remember your focus determines your reality. Focus includes thinking about, planning for, and visualizing. It also includes worrying about, 
fearing, and fighting against, which means if you focus on opportunities, you'll get more opportunities. If you focus on obstacles, you'll get more obstacles. Really, is it any more difficult to focus on love, abundance, and dreams coming true than it is to focus on money problems, painful relationships, or fears and worries? No, it's not. It just takes practice. The first step is to observe what you focus on and think about most of the time. Next, recognize your power to choose what you focus on. Then, make a conscious decision to focus on the good stuff. Everything is determined by where you place your focus. Therefore, it's a very good idea to focus on what you do want, not what you don't want. Focus on what you have, not what you don't have. Focus on what you like, not what you don't like. Focus on what feels good, not what feels bad. Focus on the solution, not the problem. Focus on the abundance, not the scarcity. Focus on having what you truly desire, not on settling for less. Focus on where you're going, not where you've been. Think of Michael Jordan sinking a game-winning three-pointer, Itzhak Perlman hitting a precise note on the violin, or investment genius Warren Buffett poring over financial statements. What do these outstanding individuals have in common? They all focus with laser-like precision on their goals. They have all mastered the magic of focus. So what are you focusing on? Not sure? Look at your life. Your life is a perfect reflection of where you're placing your focus. If you like the reflection, great. Keep up the good work. If the picture could use a little tweaking, no problem. You can change your life by changing your focus. As you focus more on what you do want and less on what you don't want, you become the conscious creator of your own precious life. Given that what you focus on determines your reality, wouldn't you agree it's worth mastering the magic of focus? With the law of attraction and the magic of focus, you truly can be and do and have whatever you desire. The Magic of Momentum Success requires first expending 10 units of effort to produce one unit of results. Your momentum will then produce 10 units of results for each unit of effort. Charles J. Givens Momentum. The Big Mo is indeed magical. The front runner in a political campaign is said to have momentum going for them. Momentum is the force that kicks a business into overdrive. In sports, the team with the momentum has the edge and seems unstoppable. You know when you've got it. You feel lucky. You're in the right place at the right time, and everything you touch turns to gold. In sports, politics, business, and life in general, momentum is a powerful force, and you definitely want it working for you. When you begin something new, whether it's a business, an exercise program, or learning a new skill, it can be slow going at first. For a while, you may be putting out major effort in exchange for what appears to be lackluster results. On any journey from where you are to where you want to be, the first few miles can be the most challenging, and you may feel like giving up. However, if you quit too soon, you'll miss out on the magic of momentum. The key is to continue to the payoff when momentum kicks in. Knowing that momentum definitely will come to assist you helps you hang in there until it does. Building momentum is like riding a bicycle. It takes a lot more effort to get the bicycle going than it does to keep it going. But as you keep moving forward, things begin to shift and you find yourself in the zone. At that point, much less effort is required to keep going as you are carried along by the flow of momentum. Momentum is the reason why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It goes both ways. Whether momentum works for you or against you depends on what way you're directing your thoughts. Let's say you're starting a business and you want customers. If you hold your focus unwaveringly on your desire, even when results are less than encouraging, pretty soon customers will start rolling in. Once that happens, you'll feel optimistic and expect more customers. This positive expectation will bring even more business your way, and soon you've got a really nice snowball effect going. What happens if you do not stay focused on creating your successful business long enough to see the desired results? You'll get discouraged, and you'll start thinking about exactly what you don't want. It's not going to work out. 
I'll have to give up and get a job soon. I'm a failure. Now you feel terrible, and you're ready to quit, which, in accordance with the law of attraction, absolutely freezes potential customers in their tracks. With that defeatist vibration, your customers simply can't find you. Want to harness the magic of momentum in your life? Here's how it works, using the bicycle metaphor. 1. Get a bicycle. Decide what goal you want to pursue. 2. Get on the bike and begin pedaling. Feel good. Focus on your dream and take inspired action. 3. Keep pedaling. Feel good. Maintain your focus and continue taking inspired action in the direction of your desire. Take heart. It's just about to get easier. 4. Enjoy the ride. Congratulations. You continued until momentum kicked in and you're coasting now. Whee! Just as a bicycle gains momentum going downhill, once you get momentum working for you, life is a breeze. Direct your thoughts toward your desire and keep on keeping on until you reach the tipping point. Then sit back and enjoy the ride. With the law of attraction and the magic of momentum working for you, you truly can be and do and have whatever you desire. The Magic of Plugging In You can extract from that infinite storehouse within you everything you need in order to live life gloriously, joyously, and abundantly. Joseph Murphy The promise of Law of Attraction is that you can be and do and have whatever you desire, right? Well, here's the fine print. You can be and do and have whatever you desire when you plug in, when you connect with Source, God, Inner Being, Higher Power. As a Law of Attraction coach, I remind my clients that connection with Source is the basis for not only attracting what they desire, but is also the basis for living a confident, empowered, joyful life. Plugging in is essential to making the Law of Attraction work for you. Plugging in to Source Energy is the way to transform illness into paradise health, lack and limitation into ever-flowing abundance, and painful relationships into relationship bliss. It's the way to create the magnificent life you desire and deserve. Plugging into Source Energy starts with an understanding of who you really are. You are a physical extension of Source Energy, with access to all the powers of the boundless universe. You are a master creator, constantly creating your life in exact accord with your thoughts and feelings. You are an external being worthy of anything and everything you desire. Because oneness is your natural state, plugging in is really just a matter of allowing the connection. And there are myriad ways to allow the connection. Prayer, meditation, communing with nature, whatever feels good to you. Because the better you feel, the more plugged in you are. When you plug in, you have the full support of your universal partner, no longer trying to do everything all by yourself. You become one with all that is, no longer feeling separate and alone. You access your divine inheritance, and everything you desire is available to you. Plugging in is the antidote to powerlessness. By connecting to the inexhaustible power supply of the universe, you're literally empowered to manifest your desires. Disconnected, you're powerless. Plugged in, you're powerful. When you plug in to the power source of all that is, you truly can be, and do, and have whatever you desire. The Magic of Creating Your Own Reality we want you to show yourself your power. We want you to remember who you are. We want you to remember that you are the creator of your own experience. Abraham Hicks How do you feel when someone says to you, You know, you create your own reality. If you're looking at a reality you like, you probably smile and say, Yeah, I did that. If you're looking at a reality you don't like, you may get upset and insist, I did not create that. I would never have created that. Well, according to the law of attraction, you are creating your own reality. In fact, you're creating your reality all day, every day, with your thoughts and feelings. The all-important question then becomes, are you creating consciously, or are you creating by default? 
The reality you perceive is a mirror reflecting back to you a picture of what you're thinking and feeling. The good news is that even if you don't particularly like the picture you've created thus far, you can begin immediately to improve it. As you learn how to consciously create your own reality, it is no longer necessary to accept unpleasant circumstances or settle for less than the life you truly desire. Because nothing is fixed and everything changes all the time, you can start right now creating the reality you truly desire, building your life thought by thought, as surely as a mason builds a house brick by brick. When you choose thoughts that feel good, you manifest circumstances that feel good. Therefore, consciously creating your own reality starts with directing your thoughts toward what feels good. Quote, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Abraham Lincoln Consciously creating your own reality begins with making the connection between what you're thinking and feeling and what's manifesting in your experience. The next step is really just a matter of applying the law of attraction principles you already know, perhaps with a new understanding, maybe in a more purposeful way. Here are some tips to help you design and create your life in accordance with your own desires, to help you manifest more of what you want and less of what you don't want. Make feeling good the most important thing. Notice how you feel and choose thoughts that feel better. Find things to appreciate. Accept your inherent worthiness. Maintain positive expectation. Listen for and take inspired action toward your desire. Focus on what you want and why you want it, letting go of how, where, when, and who. Hold fast to your dream even when there's no physical evidence that it's happening. Change your vibration rather than trying to change your circumstances. Have fun and follow your bliss. Relax and trust that all is well and that everything is unfolding perfectly. Quote, we magnetize into our lives whatever we told in our thought. Richard Bach As you accept that you create your world with your thoughts and feelings, and that you are in charge of those thoughts and feelings, you become the master creator of your own precious life. As you consciously apply the magic of creating your own reality, you will soon find yourself living in a magical universe where dreams really do come true. The Magic of Self-Love I Celebrate Myself and Sing Myself Walt Whitman You might call it self-love, self-confidence, self-acceptance, self-respect, self-esteem, self-worth, or simply feeling good about yourself. It's all the same thing, and it feels fantastic. The opposite, doubting yourself, disliking yourself, feeling ashamed, believing you're not good enough, that all feels pretty awful. As a life coach, I find that one of the major issues my clients struggle with is self-love. Oh, they may contact me for other reasons. They might want to lose weight or have more money or enjoy more fulfilling relationships. But the underlying issue often turns out to be a lack of self-love. When you love yourself, it's easy to improve relationships because you're capable of giving love and you can allow others to love you. When you love yourself, you quit using food to stuff down the pain of low self-esteem, and it becomes easy to manage your weight. When you love yourself, your vibration is high, and you naturally attract money and everything else you desire. You were born loving yourself and knowing your value. Due to pressure from parents, teachers, and peers, you may have tried to become who they wanted you to be so they would love you, and you ended up not loving yourself. This is generally followed by the absurd conclusion that you're not good enough, which results in spending your entire life trying to prove your worth and trying to get others to love you. Meanwhile, you, the perfect extension of source energy you, have been hiding your magnificence and feeling worthless. Ah, there is simply no replacement for self-love. If you don't love yourself, you will be continually disappointed in life. You won't even see opportunities right in front of you. Your relationships will be strained. Even if someone else really does love you, you won't be able to feel it. You can only allow someone else to love you to the extent that you love yourself. 
and it is equally true that you can only love and accept another person to the extent that you love and accept yourself. Everyone and everything in your environment is a reflection of your self-love or lack of it. The good news is that because everything comes from you, you don't have to try to fix the outside world. Everything changes when you fix your inside world, and the best place to start is by choosing to love yourself more. When you choose self-love, your health improves, you have more energy and vitality, your relationships become more joyful, you enjoy greater prosperity and fabulous opportunities show up for you everywhere you look. When you love yourself, you allow the universe to surprise and delight you. So how can you choose to love and accept yourself more? Start by treating yourself like the very special person you are. Start by doing nice things for yourself, such as have someone clean your house. Take the dream vacation you've been planning. Give yourself a pure pleasure day, often. Buy yourself a special gift, just because you're you. Make a list of your positive qualities and read your list daily. Whenever someone gives you a compliment, believe it. Keep a list of these compliments as evidence of how great you are and refer to it when you need a reminder. Look in the bathroom mirror each morning and say to yourself, I love you. You are absolutely and eternally wonderful and worthy of all good things. In fact, if you affirm this with feeling every time you look in the mirror, your life will improve immeasurably. It's amazing how quickly you can attract what you want when you love yourself. Treat yourself well and know you're good enough. With the magic of self-love, you can allow in what you want because you know you deserve it. As you bask in the magic of self-love, you will find that you truly can be and do and have whatever you desire. The Magic of Appreciation Nothing new can come into your life unless you open yourself up to being grateful. Michael Beckwith You've heard it all your life. Count your blessings. Appreciate what you already have and watch it multiply before your eyes. What is this phenomenon? Why is appreciation so magical? Well, it's all about vibrations. Because appreciation is the highest vibration, right up there with love and joy and empowerment. It immediately aligns you with source energy and well-being. As you cultivate an attitude of gratitude, the first benefit is that you will feel great. In addition, the universe will respond by presenting you with a dazzling array of fascinating people and delightful circumstances. Appreciation is widely held to be the most powerful process for raising your vibration, connecting with source, and attracting whatever you desire. Can counting your blessings really improve the quality of your life? The new science of gratitude says, yes. Published research from Dr. Emmons of UC Davis, the Institute of Heart Math, and others confirms that appreciation improves emotional and physical health, increases immune response, and transmits healing to every cell of your body, bolsters relationships, relieves depression and stress, improves sleep quality and duration, even brings more financial abundance. My friend is teaching her seven-year-old twins how good appreciation feels. Whenever they're cranky or out of sorts, she gets them to stop, take a deep breath, and say three things they appreciate. Even though they may be reluctant at first, once they start looking for things to appreciate, their vibration zooms up and the crankiness is gone. Try it on your kids, or on yourself. It works wonders. Consider Thanksgiving. No, I'm not talking about the holiday with the turkey and the sweet potatoes with the little marshmallows. I'm talking about living a life of thanksgiving, a life of giving thanks, a life filled with joy and appreciation. Let's expand thanksgiving to more than just one Thursday in November. The teachers in The Secret agree that appreciation is the number one process for turning your life around. Joe Vitale suggests making a list of the people and things you're grateful for. John Demartini says, Whatever we think about, and think about, we bring about. Every morning when his feet hit the floor, James Ray says, Thank you, and focuses on what he's grateful for. 
feeling the appreciation as deeply as possible. And Lee Brower carries a gratitude rock in his pocket, remembering to be grateful each time he touches it. Here are some ways to stay in the magic of appreciation all day, every day. As you first wake up, follow James Ray's advice to say thank you as soon as your feet touch the floor in the morning. Or before you even get out of bed, raise your vibration by thinking of things you're grateful for, including the bright and shiny new day that glistens before you. Throughout the day, make it a game to see how many things you can find to appreciate. Try it on your way to work this week. Notice how your vibration improves as you bring into your awareness things you enjoy. A green light, a blue sky, a flock of birds, a delicious cup of coffee, your favorite music, the lovely and ever-changing cloud shapes. There are endless things to be grateful for, so set your radar for anything that summons up the high vibration of appreciation. In the evening, do what Oprah does and keep a gratitude journal. Each evening, write down at least five things you're grateful for that day. Here's the magic. Keeping a gratitude journal orients you to naturally look for things to appreciate. And this gratitude orientation will attract into your life even more things to appreciate. At bedtime, end your day as it began by feeling grateful. Drift off to a peaceful, restful sleep by feeling grateful for your wonderful life. The bottom line about the magic of appreciation is this. It makes you feel good. When you choose an appreciative approach to life, you're a vibrational match to all manner of well-being. As you continue to apply the magic of appreciation today and every day, you will quickly and easily magnetize into your life everything you desire. How's that for something to appreciate? The Magic of a Definite Chief Aim Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? asked Alice. That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, replied the cat. Lewis Carroll from Alice in Wonderland the term definite chief aim comes from the success philosophy of Napoleon Hill, especially his landmark books The Law of Success, 1928, and Think and Grow Rich, 1937. Thirty years ago, my boyfriend's mother gave me a copy of Think and Grow Rich. The boyfriend didn't last long, but the gift from his mother started me on a lifelong journey of discovery into the power of thought. I remember the thrill of recognition I felt upon first reading these words. Truly, thoughts are things, and powerful things at that when they are mixed with definiteness of purpose, persistence, and a burning desire for their translation into riches and other material objects. A strongly held definite chief aim transforms your mind into a powerful magnet, which attracts the people and circumstances necessary for you to accomplish your desire. It's the first step in turning invisible desires into visible reality. Without a clear direction, it's all too easy to drift through life like a ship without a rudder. The magic of a definite chief aim helps you organize, direct, and harness the infinite power of your mind. Once you have clarity about what you want and why you want it, you're ready to follow these five steps to attain your definite chief aim. 1. Write a clear description of your definite chief aim. Back when Arnold Schwarzenegger was nobody from nowhere, he stated his definite chief aim. I am going to be the number one box office star in all of Hollywood. Explaining how he intended to accomplish this feat, he said, What you do is create a vision of who you want to be, and then live into that picture as if it were already true. Years later, in 1991, Receipts from Terminator 2 confirmed Schwarzenegger to be the most popular box office draw in the world, thus successfully accomplishing his definite chief aim. 2. Include a clear statement of what you intend to give in return. As I'm sure you agree, there's no such thing as something for nothing. To get what you want, it's important to decide what you will give in return. Oprah's definite chief aim has been to make a positive difference in the lives of millions of people. Per Oprah, as far back as I can recall, my prayer has been the same. Use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, 
and what I can do and use it for a purpose greater than myself. Oprah has achieved phenomenal success for herself and others by focusing on a purpose greater than herself. 3. Believe you can and will attain it. What you attain is limited only by your capacity to believe you can have it. To believe you can have what you want, keep thinking thoughts of having what you want. Magnetize your mind with positive affirmations. Visualize, imagine, and feel yourself already in possession of your desire. In 1987, Jim Carrey was a struggling comic and a part-time dishwasher, dreaming of fame and fortune. In addition to affirmations and visualizations, he wrote himself a check for $10 million and dated it Thanksgiving 1995, adding the notation, For acting services rendered. In the fall of 1995, he did in fact reach his definite chief aim when he signed a $10 million contract to film The Mask. 4. Take Inspired Action Tune into guidance and inspiration from your non-physical partner. When you listen to your inner voice and follow the guidance you receive, you are truly co-creating with Source. You don't have to do it all alone. Your intuition will lead you step by step in the direction of your definite chief aim. 5. Persevere. To accomplish your definite chief aim, you must stay the course. If your definite chief aim is based on a burning desire for its achievement, you will be able to persevere through doubts and difficulties. Remember that the dominating thoughts of your mind will transform themselves into physical reality. Thomas Edison had a definite chief aim to create the electric light bulb. He persevered through 10,000 failed attempts before successfully realizing his dream. Quote, If you don't have a dream, how are you going to have a dream come true? From the movie South Pacific. Vitalize and thoroughly saturate your mind with your definite chief aim. Concentrate on the end result as you see and feel and believe yourself already in possession of it. Your definite chief aim is a blueprint that will lead you step by step towards its attainment. It's a bridge between your dream and your reality. Remember to keep your vibration high while following the above steps and you'll joyfully engage the magic of a definite chief aim. The Magic of Keeping Your Eyes on the Prize Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Lyrics by civil rights activist Alice Wine I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. These are the wonderful words my client, Rini, wrote to me in an email. She continued, It took all the strength I had to keep my eyes on the prize and not allow that old thinking to get me down. Hurrah, Rini. Keep your eyes on the prize. Isn't that just about the best law of attraction statement you've ever heard? It gets right to the heart of the matter, succinctly expressing the essence of law of attraction. Focus on the prize on what you do want, not on what you don't want. Keeping your eyes on the prize gets you in the vortex where all your desires are ready and waiting for you to align with them. Keeping your eyes on the prize moves you from observer to creator. Observing what is can only bring you more of what is. As you shift from observer to creator by focusing on what you prefer, you're using your inherent power to design and create your own life. Keep your eyes on the prize. Feel as good as you can. Refuse to give in to doubt and disappointment. That prize is yours. Let's say you're in real estate or some other business that analysts say has been hard hit by economic conditions. What to do? Keep your eyes on the prize. Focus on what you do want instead of focusing on negative reports and gloomy forecasts what you don't want. In this way, you create your own economic conditions, and you attract an ongoing stream of motivated buyers and sellers. Perhaps your goal is better relationships. Maybe you're even ready to attract the relationship. In this case, keeping your eyes on the prize means not giving up, not settling, not finding reasons why you can't have the relationships you desire. When you keep your eyes on the relationship prize, you easily and joyfully allow in the best relationships you can imagine. What about health and fitness issues? 
Whether it's a full-blown illness with a scary label or a few extra pounds, what you gonna do? Keep your eyes on the prize. Visualize and imagine the end result you desire. See and feel yourself living in a healthy, fit body, and voila, it's yours. Okay, I agree. It does take practice. It does take practice to embrace your power and make the leap from observer to creator. But it is so worth it. As Abraham Hicks says, fire up the passion of your imagination and feel the vividness of your creation. Keeping your eyes on the prize is the most valuable skill you can ever develop. This is how anyone who has ever made a dream come true has done it. And you can do it too. Keep your eyes on the prize. Feel as good as you can while positively expecting to receive it. And that prize is yours. The Magic of Guarding Your Vibration There is nothing wrong with you that cannot be fixed by what is right with you. Michael Neal To recognize your vibration as a precious treasure is merely to hint at its value and significance in your life. Even fame and fortune pale by comparison. Everything you experience comes to you in response to your vibration. To live the life you desire, it will serve you very well indeed to guard your vibration as your most prized possession. Your vibration, which consists of your thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, and feelings, is the state from which you attract people and circumstances into your life. A high vibration attracts what you do want, and a low vibration attracts what you do not want. As I've become ever more vigilant about guarding my vibration, I've noticed a tendency to activate past memories of sadness and disappointment. With awareness of this negative habit, I am now able to make a conscious choice to not go there. With this awareness, I can swiftly replace sad thoughts with joyful, empowering thoughts. Here are some ways to guard your precious vibrations. Be conscious. To be a conscious creator, it follows that you must be fully conscious, which means no more sleepwalking through life. With mindfulness, you create deliberately rather than by default. Manage your vibration with conscious awareness and be the deliberate creator you truly are. Think good thoughts. You have a choice in every moment what kinds of thoughts to think, and you create your reality based on this moment-to-moment -moment choice. Thinking good thoughts produces good feelings which attracts good stuff. Be the gatekeeper and refuse to allow negative thoughts to enter your kingdom. Focus on positive aspects. Set your intention to focus on the positive aspects in everyone and everything. Focus on what you do want, not on what you don't want. Focus on what feels good, not what feels bad. Focus on the abundance, not the scarcity. Continuously seek out the most positive aspects of your life and consciously direct your attention there. Notice how you feel. Remember to be extra vigilant about guarding your vibration when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Good advice from the 12-step programs. Taking good care of your vibration is also the best thing you can do for your health. When you think feel-good thoughts, your body releases feel-good chemicals into your system. Protecting your vibration is not a passive activity. It's a proactive exercise to keep you tuning and retuning your vibration to what feels good. It's a conscious commitment to keep focusing and refocusing on what you do want. When all is said and done, creating a wonderful life is simply a matter of choosing wonderful thoughts. As you guard your vibration by reaching for the best feeling thoughts you can find in each moment, you're creating the wonderful life you desire and deserve, one thought at a time. To have the best day ever, think the best thoughts ever. The Magic of Joyful Relationships Shower the people you love with love. James Taylor As most of us have experienced, relationships can bring us our greatest joys as well as our deepest sorrows. Relationships are such an integral part of our lives that the quality of our relationships often determines the overall quality of our lives. How, then, can we experience relationships that lift us up rather than drag us down? 
By exposing limiting beliefs and replacing them with empowering beliefs, we can all experience the magic of joyful relationships. To consciously create the happy, healthy relationships you desire, let's start by taking a look at what does not create joyful relationships. Blaming and complaining. The more you focus on the unwanted aspects of others, the more unwanted aspects you elicit from them. Ouch. Expecting others to make you happy. When your happiness or unhappiness is dependent on the behavior of others, you give away both your power and your freedom. Trying to change, fix, control others. If you need others to change so that you can feel good, you are definitely looking for happiness in all the wrong places. There's got to be a better way. What does create joyful relationships? Feel good first. Being independently happy and determined to keep your own vibration high is the perfect platform for creating great relationships. As you know from Law of Attraction, feeling good is the most important thing. Self-love first. If you want others to love, value, and appreciate you, you must love, value, and appreciate yourself first. Period. Source first. When you tend to your primary relationship with your inner being, source, God, then all your other relationships will be harmonious. Think and thank. As you think of things you appreciate about others and express that appreciation often, you deepen and sweeten your connection with them. Look for positive aspects. When you focus on the positive qualities of others, they will display more of their positive qualities, at least with you. It helps to remember this. At their core, everyone is pure, positive energy. Tell a new story. You can free yourself from past hurts and painful memories by talking about relationships the way you want them to be. You can get unstuck by telling a new, improved story, such as, All my relationships are joyful. Now that we've shined a light on the major factors behind relationship woes and relationship bliss, let's turn our attention to what Law of Attraction considers the key to manifesting wonderfully harmonious relationships. Directing Your Thoughts Although you have no real control over what others are doing, you have complete control over your own thoughts, and, happily, that is all you need. Your thoughts determine what you attract into your life, and your thoughts determine how these people behave once they get there. Good relationships are creations. As you direct your thoughts exclusively and consistently toward what you do want in relationships, you begin consciously and deliberately creating the relationships of your dreams. As you maintain a strong connection with Source, love yourself and others, appreciate rather than judge, live your life as you see fit and let others do the same, accept full responsibility for your own happiness, feel as good as you can in every moment, and direct the power of your thoughts toward the positive aspects of others, you are applying the law of attraction to create delightful, delicious relationships. When you do these things, you are sure to experience the magic of joyful relationships. The Magic of Intention Our Intention Creates Our Reality Wayne Dyer There are many excellent processes to assist us in applying the law of attraction to become more conscious creators. One of my favorites is the process of setting intentions, which I find to be one of the easiest and most powerful processes for manifesting our desires. When I heard about Lynn McTaggart's book, The Intention Experiment, Using Your Thoughts to Change Your Life and the World, I was intrigued. Although I was already certain of the magic of intention, I thought that scientific support for why intention works might help me to become an even more masterful intender. Also, I love the title, The Intention Experiment. Because, really, aren't we all engaged in our own personal intention experiment every day? This book makes it clear that humanity has entered a new age, an age in which the scientific community recognizes that consciousness affects matter. Yay! For many of us, there is nothing really new here, but it's fun to see science confirming what we already know spiritually and empirically. McTaggart clarifies the science behind intention by citing scientific evidence that a thought 
as an actual physical thing, a tangible energy. And every thought, every intention, every judgment has the power to take physical form. We're all connected. Random event generators, REGs, recorded that the world felt a collective shudder several hours before the first plane crash on 9-11, indicating a mass premonition. Yeah, we really are all one. Mind affects its surroundings, whether or not we are consciously sending an intention. Therefore, to think is to affect. Meditation produces permanent emotional improvement, tunes the brain to happiness, and heightens intuition. Thought produces the same mental instructions as action. Athletes who do no physical exercise but only imagine their workouts can increase their muscle size and strength by over 13% in just a few weeks. In the chapter on athletes, McTaggart uses the example of Muhammad Ali. Ali was a master of intention who used visualization, mental rehearsal, and his enormously powerful affirmation, I am the greatest, to become a world champion. As top athletes utilize mental rehearsal to gain a competitive edge, you can improve your health, enhance your performance in every area of your life, and affect your future by conscious intention. As you set forth positive intentions, you focus energy and magnetize the circumstances that will bring about the reality you desire. As you focus your thoughts intentionally, you are in creative control of your life. In the process of identifying your desires and focusing the energy of your thoughts, you are applying the law of attraction to attract what you do want rather than what you don't want. The process of setting intentions is a powerful way to design and create your life in exact accord with your desires. It's a great idea to begin each day by setting positive intentions. For example, today I intend to feel good and be filled with joy and appreciation. Choose thoughts and experiences that please me. Be a magnet for amazing prosperity, vibrant good health, and fulfilling relationships. Maintain a strong connection to source energy. Uplift others. Open, relax, breathe, and draw in a continuous stream of well-being. Science is providing evidence of the miraculous power you have to consciously create your life with your thoughts. As you employ the magic of intention, focusing on what you do want rather than what you don't want, you powerfully magnetize into your life all that you desire. So think big, knowing there is nothing you cannot be, or do, or have, and direct your life with the magic of intention. The Magic of Releasing Limiting Beliefs Like each of us, I've been hired by the universe to be myself. Michael Beckwith I am good enough. I am lovable. It is okay to live my dream. These are some of the profound declarations my clients make as they release limiting beliefs. These are extraordinary moments when they realize what's been holding them back, and they release a lifetime of resistance. With a certainty that comes from the depths of their being, they declare to all the universe, It's my life. I am worthy. I am supposed to get what I want. Michael Beckwith writes eloquently about his childhood realization that the boy his family saw was not the Michael he knew himself to be. At that moment, Michael writes, I consciously shut down my cosmic connection and began conforming myself to labels that boxed me into being someone that everyone would be comfortable around. Our circumstances are individual and unique, but the results are often similar. We come to view ourselves the way others see us rather than who we really are. We learn to live with disappointment. We acquiesce to being okay without the money, the health, the relationships we desire. We're even tempted to stop desiring altogether, if only it will stop the pain. But there's just one thing. It never feels right to do without, to settle for less, to give up on our dreams. It just never feels right. There's a battle going on within us when we harbor limiting beliefs. On the one hand, we know we're supposed to have desires, and the universe is supposed to fill those desires. On the other hand, We've become convinced we can't really have what we want. Not really. Oh, maybe we think we can have some of what we want, but only if we work very hard and if we're very good or very lucky. 
This battle continues to rage every day of our lives until we root out the limiting beliefs that keep us from living what we came here knowing, that we can have what we want, that physical life experience is set up to inspire desire, and we're co-creating with the universe to fulfill our desires. Of course, the universe is fulfilling our desires. It's just that we can't access those desires until we allow them in, until we believe we can, until we let go of, I can't, and reconnect with what our true self knows for sure. Yes, I can. I get to choose. We know this. No matter how much we try to stuff it down with food or numb it with drugs or run away from it with distractions, it's still there, calling to us. I really can have it all. I am free. Until we release and replace limiting beliefs, they continue to undermine every thought, every choice, every decision we make. Limiting beliefs block the manifestation of our desires. Limiting beliefs block our natural state of well-being. As I assist my clients to shine a light on their limiting beliefs, they are able to break the chains and take back their power, their freedom, and their joy. It is okay to live my own life. I do deserve the good things in life. It is okay to have money. Once a negative, limiting belief is released, a positive, empowering yes-I-can knowing steps up quite naturally to replace it, then everything shifts. We click back into who we really are and who we came here to be, and life is fun the way we knew it could be. We live in a universe of abundance, limited only by our beliefs. When we change our underlying beliefs, everything changes. When we replace negative, limiting beliefs with joyful, empowering beliefs, we release resistance to our natural state of well-being. When we do this, the battle is over and we're reconnected with who we really are. When we release limiting beliefs, we realign with Source and are moved to passionately declare, I am magnificent. I can have what I want. Yes, I can. The Magic of Yes The big question is whether you are going to be able to say a hearty yes to your adventure. Joseph Campbell You know, I think I get it. I think I finally get it that there's no one else out there saying yes or no to our desires. There's no one else granting or denying us what we desire. It's our choice. We can say yes to ourselves and attract what we desire, or we can say no and repel what we're asking for. When we choose the magic of yes, we allow our dreams to come true. To gain insight into the magical powers of yes, let's take a look at its etymology. The word yes comes from Old English and Indo-European roots, meaning so be it, and may it be so. Clearly then, when we choose the magic of yes, we're conscious creators declaring so be it. When we say yes, we're creating our lives in accordance with our own desires. As children, many of us were trained with no. According to a UCLA study, the average child hears the word no more than 400 times a day. No, you may not have another cookie. No, you are not staying up past your bedtime. No, you cannot have that expensive new bike. No, you are not wearing that to school. No, no, no. Having internalized all these restrictions and limitations, it's no wonder we learn to restrict and limit ourselves. Having learned to say no to ourselves, we can now learn to say yes. When we say yes, everything changes. When we say an emphatic yes to ourselves, we are filled with an empowering life force energy. Life opens up for us in magical ways. Happy, supportive people appear. Awesome circumstances line up for us. Yes is the magic word that unlocks all the doors. Here are some doors that my clients have been able to unlock by learning to say yes to themselves. He said, yes, I can start my own business and do what I enjoy. And he's loving every minute of it. She said, yes, I can have the relationship of my dreams after two failed marriages. As you wish. He said, yes. I can make good money in real estate, even in today's tough market. ka -ching. She said, yes, I can attain and maintain my ideal weight after being heavy my entire life. Hello, gorgeous. She said, 
Yes, I can be on Oprah. Yes, indeed. She appeared on the Oprah show in 2008 to discuss the law of attraction. My client in Australia is saying yes to herself in a big way now that she realizes how valuable and deserving she is. She said a big, orgasmic yes, her term, to life every day now. And when she experiences something delightful, she says, oh yes, more of this please. If you've been saying no and depriving yourself of what you truly desire, it's time to utilize the magic of yes. Whenever you hear that unpleasant word no creep into your thoughts, stop and replace it with yes. Stop telling yourself no. Let go of restrictions and limitations. It's up to you now. What do you choose? Here are some yes affirmations to help get you started. Feel yourself having it your way as you repeat these kinds of positive statements. Yes, I can manifest my desires. Yes, I am a magnificent creator. Yes, I do believe in myself. Yes, I am adorable. Yes, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise. Yes, I do accept and love myself completely. Yes, I am brilliant. Yes, I am happy. Yes, I do feel so very good. Yes, I can have the new car, the sexy lover, the perfect body. Say yes to having what you want. Say yes to following your bliss. Say yes to love and joy and adventure. Say yes to fun and prosperity and well-being. Say yes to feeling good. Say yes to living life fully. Say yes to dreams coming true. Say a hearty yes to your adventure. Empower, transform, and free yourself by choosing the magic of yes. The Magic of Enthusiasm Make sure that your life is a rare entertainment. It doesn't take anything drastic. You needn't be gorgeous or wealthy or smart. Just very enthusiastic. Bet Midler Welcome to the wonderful world of enthusiasm. When you enter this magical realm, you ride a wave of life force energy that carries you easily and joyfully to the fulfillment of your desires. Want more money? Get excited about it. Ready for your ideal relationship? Feel passionate about it. With enthusiasm and passion, you broadcast your desires at a zillion watts and the universe responds with equal intensity. The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek for filled with God. How about that? The etymology confirms that enthusiasm is the state of being plugged into source. Enthusiasm is that twinkle in your eye, that spring in your step. It's that fire in the belly that says, I'm alive, and I know who I am and what I want. Enthusiasm is wholeheartedness. With enthusiasm, you're aligned, you're connected, you're open to receive the juicy abundance of life. Quote, Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Ralph Waldo Emerson Enthusiasm determines the difference between ordinary and extraordinary, between mediocre and meteoric. In sports, politics, business, the arts, in every field of human endeavor, the ones who make it to the top are invariably fueled by enthusiasm. What greatness are you ready to achieve with the power of enthusiasm? Here's how to get the magic of enthusiasm flowing freely in your life. Acknowledge that enthusiasm is your birthright, which means it's always there, like the sun on a cloudy day. To align with your natural state of enthusiasm, do what you love. Let your heart steer the ship. What have you always felt drawn to do since you were a kid? What activities make you come alive? What totally absorbs you so you lose track of time? Find things you love to do and give yourself permission to do them. Hang around with happy kids, playful pets, vibrant friends, and play. Stop postponing joy. Life is supposed to be fun, so have some fun today. Say yes more than no. Act now rather than someday. Choose your heart over your head. Be yourself, who you really are, rather than who they say you should be. Go for your big dreams and refuse to settle for less than the best. Show up. As the song says, 
when you get the chance to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. A hearty dose of enthusiasm can mean the difference between an okay life and a life of magnificence. Your vibration of enthusiasm is a powerful magnet summoning and attracting your highest good, your most heartfelt desires. Rediscover your natural exuberance. Give the universe a crystal clear, unequivocal statement of your desires by focusing with full-on enthusiasm. When you engage the magic of enthusiasm, you'll be supported and empowered to live your best life now. The Magic of Excellent Health Our body is really the product of our thoughts. Dr. John Hagelin, Quantum Physicist According to the Law of Attraction, you magnetize and attract to yourself whatever you focus on, whether you want it or not. If you think about and imagine yourself feeling exuberantly healthy, you're attracting vibrant good health. If you worry about some dreaded disease and read scary stories about the vast numbers of people afflicted with it, you're attracting illness. When you make the connection between what you're thinking and feeling and what's manifesting in your experience, you become the conscious creator of your own precious life and the magic of excellent health is just a thought away. 2,400 years ago, Plato asserted, If you want to heal the body, you must first heal the mind. The mind-body connection has never been as strongly supported by science as it is today. More and more scientists agree that you create your physical condition through your thoughts, which means you can think yourself ill or think yourself well. The starting point for attaining and maintaining good health is to know that well-being is your natural state. And, of course, the well-being of physical health is no different than the well-being of financial abundance or loving relationships or successful careers. The question is always the same. Are you allowing your natural state of well-being or resisting it? Because it's natural for your body to be well. When you feel pain, discomfort, or illness of any kind, it's your guidance system alerting you to the existence of blocked energy. Thus alerted, you can then make the decision to release resistance and allow well-being. So how do you allow your natural state of well-being? Here are some tips. If you don't feel good, whether it's a simple headache or a full-blown disease with a label and a diagnosis from a doctor, a good first response is to relax and breathe deeply. Your body knows how to right itself, and often the answer is just to get out of its way. As you relax and breathe, you release resistance and allow the well-being to once again flow smoothly and freely. Focus on health rather than illness. Focus deliberately and consistently on the physical condition you desire. Speak only of health. Imagine, visualize, intend, affirm, and expect vibrant good health. An unwanted physical sensation is information that your thoughts are blocking your natural state of well-being. By paying attention to how you feel, and reaching for a feeling of relief, you nip resistance in the bud and avoid the potential for more serious physical distress. If you're currently experiencing less than excellent health, it's empowering to know you can transform sickness into wellness by directing your thoughts toward health. As you relax and breathe, find reasons to be happy, find people and things to appreciate, love yourself and others. Notice how you feel and think thoughts that feel better. You're choosing to allow your natural state of well-being. When you do these things, you're masterfully applying the law of attraction to bring about the excellent health you desire. The Magic of Commitment Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always in effectiveness. Guta over the years of studying and applying the law of attraction to make my dreams come true and supporting my clients to do the same, I have discovered an essential step in the attraction process, which is either overlooked or rejected by many people. This essential step is commitment. Was that an ugh I just heard? For those of you who think of commitment as the C word, read on. It's often the magic of commitment that determines whether you live the life of your dreams or end up settling for less than you truly desire. Studies show that lack of commitment is the number one reason people fail to reach their goals. In my corporate days, I recall my Asian boss declaring, there is no try. Similarly, in Star Wars, Yoda scolds Luke, do or do not, 
there is no try. Having been brought up to believe that trying my best was a virtue, I really didn't understand what they meant. Now I get it. There is no try. You're either committed or you're not. And that makes all the difference. It's like the New Year's resolution that's completely forgotten by the end of January. Without commitment, it's all too easy to lose sight of your goals. Quote, The moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. Guta With commitment, obstacles become opportunities, rather than reasons to give up. With commitment, you move from, can I do this? to, I am doing this. With commitment, the universe moves mountains for you. As Gutta says above, all sorts of things occur to help you which would not have occurred without it. With commitment, failure is not an option. And if failure is not an option, what's left? That's right, success. To start tapping into the magic of commitment, the first step is to get really clear about what you want and why you want it. To truly commit, it must be something you passionately desire. It's also essential to make sure it's your dream you're committing to, not someone else's. It must come from your heart. Do you have a desire that's been sitting out there in vibrational escrow a little too long? Are you ready and willing to commit to manifesting it? To determine if you're ready to apply the magic of commitment, write down the answers to these questions. What specifically do I want to happen? Include details. Why do I want this? How will I feel when I achieve this goal? Do I want it with passion? Is this my dream or someone else's? Am I willing to ask for support when I need it? Am I willing to stay focused and refuse to give up? It may just be one more day or one more inspired action or one more person. Am I excited about making this promise to myself? Can I enjoy the journey from where I am to where I want to be? If you answered these questions with a great big enthusiastic yes, you are indeed ready to make a wholehearted commitment. When you commit, you broadcast a powerful vibration out into the universe and the universe responds, your wish is my command. When you commit, you place a clear and definite order with the Cosmic Cafe and the Cosmic Chefs respond, coming right up. Commitment is an absolute intention to succeed, which activates the law of attraction to line up the people and resources that will make your dream a reality. With the law of attraction and the magic of commitment, you truly can be, and do, and have whatever you desire. The Magic of Trust When you trust, the current will carry you to all of the circumstances and events and experiences that you've been asking for. Abraham Hicks When I was in my mid-twenties, my best friend pointed out to me that I didn't really trust anyone or anything. Although somewhat of an exaggeration, the truth of what she said resonated deeply within me, and I made a note to self. Someday you might want to look into this trust thing. Over the years, as I began to peek inside that box labeled trust, I was astonished to find that it contains nothing less than the secrets to living a magical life the veritable keys to the kingdom. It turns out that trust is absolutely essential to living a happy, healthy life. In law of attraction terms, trust is another word for allowing. When we trust, we allow our natural state of well-being to flow into our lives. When we don't trust, we resist the well-being that would otherwise be ours. Good to know, huh? In my more skeptical pre-trust days, I believed I had to do everything on my own, often feeling separate and alone. Back then, I believed I had to make things happen with physical action, and I exhausted myself trying to force square pegs into round holes. What a joy to learn that, when I trust, the current will carry me to all the circumstances, events, and experiences I've been asking for. Learning to trust is magical. So what are we talking about here? Trust what? Trust Source, God, your inner being. Trust the stream. Trust your gut, your emotional guidance system. Yes, it's all of the above and more. For me, this is the best way to express it. Trust that all is well. 
even when it may not appear that way. Quote, Hold the vision and trust that the universe will acclimate to your vision. Hold the vision and trust the process. Abraham Hicks When I trust that all is well, I feel good, which is another way of saying I'm connected with Source, which is another way of saying I'm in the vortex. When I trust that all is well, I know that if I don't manifest the exact thing I desire at the exact moment I desire it, it's because something even better is on its way to me. When I trust that all is well, I free myself from judging everyone and everything as good or bad. When I trust that all is well, the law of attraction works for me rather than against me. When I trust that all is well, I stop messing with the cursed howls and focus on my job which is to enjoy the journey of my life. How will your life be different when you live from a place of trust, serenely going with the flow? Here's a preview. Take a moment and enjoy the ride. Imagine yourself floating blissfully down the stream, relaxed and at ease. Trusting the perfect timing of the universe, you let go of when. Trusting the perfect choreography of the universe, you let go of how. As you relax and flow naturally with the current, you're plugged into the power supply of Source, infused with life force energy for the journey. As you trust the stream to take you where you want to go, you experience the magical relief of dropping the oars and being carried gently along. Tuned in to guidance, intuition, and inspiration, you take inspired action, confident that good things are continually manifesting for you. Feeling safe, supported, and peaceful, you release resistance and see your life as a grand adventure. Trusting the natural order of things, you let go of effort, hard work, and struggle, and you float merrily, 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 gently down the stream. Ah. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? As you train yourself to trust that all is well by making a decision to do so, your vibration shifts, and the evidence shows up. With trust comes belief and expectation, as well as the certainty that everything is happening for your highest good. When you trust that all is well, you allow your life to unfold with ease and grace. When you hold the vision and trust the stream to carry you to everything you desire, you align with the magic of trust, and life becomes yummy and delicious. The Magic of Telling a New Story As you tell the story the way you want it to be, the universe has to comply. It has to. Abraham Hicks While listening to the Abraham Hicks 2008 Mexican Cruise, I noticed a powerful theme running through the entire 10-CD set. The concept of telling a new story for your life. Here's the message. Whatever you're experiencing in your life is a direct reflection of the story you've been telling. Therefore, if you'd like to experience different circumstances in your life, tell a different story. Simply start telling the story of your life the way you want it to be, rather than the way it is, or the way it was, or the way you're afraid it might be. Take back your power to create your life exactly the way you want it to be with the magic of telling a new story. To begin, step back and take a good long look at your life. Are your relationships fulfilling? How's that bank account looking? Do you love your work and feel good about your level of success? What about your health and fitness? Are there areas of your life that could use some tweaking? Great. Tell a new story. Start today and tell the story of your life the way you want it to be. Tell an empowering new story that works for you rather than against you. Everything you're living is in response to the story you're telling. Everything. As you think the thoughts and feel the feelings of living out your new, empowering story, circumstances and events will morph to reflect your new, empowering story. As you tell a new story, you summon new experiences. Tell your story the way you want it to be. You're the star, the central character, the lead in a production called Your Life. Here's an example. All is well in my world. I love my life and see it getting better every day. I experience joyous relationships with the wonderful, amazing, uplifting people in my life. I feel good and look good. I love and appreciate my body and enjoy vibrant good health. 
I'm exhilarated and excited as I begin each new day. I have an occupation that thrills me. I experience ever-flowing prosperity and abundance. I expect and believe that something wonderful is just about to happen. I stay connected with Source, happily creating my ideal life. As you practice the story that resonates with your dreams rather than your nightmares, you become a vibrational match to a grand and glorious adventure. Then everything that matches your new story will actualize around you, and everything that matches your old story will disappear from your life. Continuing the example above, everything I desire flows to me easily and joyfully. I make feeling good the most important thing, and I'm getting really good at keeping my vibration high by choosing thoughts that feel good. I'm filled with appreciation, always looking for more to appreciate and enjoy. I love my life. I love myself. I love my family and friends. I'm a magnet for amazing prosperity, vibrant good health, and loving relationships. I'm a successful, confident, prosperous, loving, generous, happy person. That's the kind of story you want to tell. You know by looking at your life what kind of story you're telling. If your life does not look and feel the way you want it to, you're telling a story about what you don't want. As you begin consistently telling the story of what you do want, you train your life into alignment with what you do want. As you tell a new story and practice that new vibration, the universe will show you evidence of that new story. It's your story, your choice, your life. As you tell the story of your life the way you want it to be and feel it the way you want it to be, you broadcast that high vibration out to the universe, and the universe will, indeed, must, deliver to you the circumstances and events that conform to your new and improved story. As you replace your old habit of talking about your life as it is, and instead consciously choose to talk about your life as you want it to be, you become the conscious creator of your own reality. As you engage the magic of telling a new story, you take creative control of your own precious life. The Magic of Asking if you don't ask, you don't get. Gandhi Psst. Over here. Want to know how to get what you want in life? Ask for it. That's right. You've got to ask for it. The law of attraction promises that when you ask, it is always given. One, you ask. Two, source says yes. Three, you allow it in. Since asking is the first step in the manifestation process, let's take a good look at the magic of asking. Most of us conclude from our childhood experiences whether we can have what we ask for or not. Then we spend the rest of our lives proving our thesis, one way or the other. Self-fulfilling prophecy and all that. It's easy for a child who asks and receives to become an adult who asks and receives. And it's easy for a child who asks and does not receive to become an adult who doesn't even ask. But anyone, empowered by the knowledge that when you ask, it is always given, can begin confidently asking and joyfully receiving. Here are some tips to help you ask for what you want, and actually get it. Ask with confidence and certainty. Inability to recognize failure, refusal to take no for an answer, and zero tolerance for impossible helps you find the yes behind the no. Example. When my mother-in-law's health failed, she was moved into an assisted living facility. Every day for two years, she said she wanted to go home. For two years, she refused to listen to reason. As a result, a way was found for her to return home and live out her life in her own home with full-time care. Ask with determination and persistence. View any rejection as getting you one step closer to your goal. Persistence can turn a no into a yes. Example. As a kid, I enjoyed hearing my father tell the story of how he persisted in asking my mother for a second date. After a very enjoyable lunch date, he asked her out for the next night. She declined with some reason, so he asked her out for a couple of nights later. She declined with some other reason. So he asked for a third time, and she declined with yet another reason. Believe it or not, he picked a fourth possible date night, and she accepted. Yay, Dad! Ask clearly and precisely. 
By asking specifically and unequivocally, you become a vibrational match to your desires, and they manifest quickly and easily. Example. When my husband and I were buying our first house, we offered 15% less than the list price and asked the seller to pay all the closing costs. Although our realtor said it was impossible in that seller's market, the seller said yes, and with my husband's VA eligibility, we moved into our first home for free. More ways to become a supercharged asker. Stay focused on your desire. Watch expectantly for indications that it's coming. Refuse to give up. Stay positive. Greet small results with appreciation. Be open to the yes arriving in surprising ways, perhaps looking a bit different, even better than you expected. With the magic of asking, there are no more missed opportunities, roads not taken, what-ifs or might-have-beens. Ask for what you want. Ask for the sale. Ask for the raise. Ask for help around the house. Ask for the job. Ask for a discount. Ask for a better interest rate. Ask for a date. Ask for a friend. Ask for a promotion. Ask to be of service. Ask, ask, ask. Then take the next step. See and feel and believe yourself already in possession of what you're asking for. And while you're doing all this asking, remember to ask for assistance from source. All the advice, guidance, and help you could ever want or need is available to you at all times, completely free, absolutely correct, and always tailor-made for you. Connect with Source to align with your desires and let in what you're asking for. In this universe of well-being, where you can manifest whatever you desire and allow, it's not necessary to give up or settle. The universe has already said yes to all your desires. As magical as it sounds, that's the way the universe is set up. So make a strong declaration. This is what I want, and I'm not settling for less. With the law of attraction and the magic of asking, you become the conscious creator of your own precious life. And it all starts with asking. The Magic of the Vortex Life from inside the vortex is sublime. Abraham Hicks like many of you, I've been listening to Abraham Hicks talk about getting in the vortex for some time now, and perhaps like many of you, I've been wondering, what is the vortex, and how do I get in? These questions and more are addressed in their book, The Vortex, where the law of attraction assembles all cooperative relationships. Read on, and we'll pursue the magic of the vortex together. What is the vortex? The vortex is defined as the place where everything you desire has already been lined up for you. It's referred to variously as the vortex of well-being, the vortex of becoming, the vortex of attraction, and my personal favorite, your swirling vortex of creation which contains everything you desire and everything you have become. Here's how it works. Each time you have a desire, the non-physical part of you becomes the vibrational, expanded version of your request. Therefore, everything you have asked for already exists in vibrational reality. All your desires have already manifested vibrationally and are waiting for you in your vortex. Got a problem? Get in the vortex where the solution is. Seeking inspiration? Get in the vortex and be inspired. Have a desire for greater abundance, improved health, more joyful relationships? Get in the vortex. In the vortex, it is done, complete, already manifested. Of course, it's okay to spend time outside the vortex. In fact, being out of the vortex provides an opportunity to launch more rockets of desire, which are actualized in your vortex. Vibrational reality always precedes physical reality. How to get in the vortex. Getting in the vortex means aligning your physical perspective with the non-physical source energy part of it. Getting in the vortex starts by accepting the existence of this vibrational reality, then doing your best to move in the direction of it. To achieve the vibrational frequency of your vortex, feel your way. The vortex is a vibrational state of being that you feel your way into. Your emotions tell you whether you're inside or outside the vortex. Feel your way in by reaching for the best feeling thoughts you can find in each moment. As you choose thoughts that feel better, you raise your vibration and move closer to the vortex. 
when you raise your vibration up to hope, there's the doorway to the vortex and you're almost there. Think good feeling thoughts. Make feeling good the most important thing and consistently direct your thoughts to what feels good. By thinking thoughts that feel good, you easily move into your vortex where everything you desire is available to you. Take good feeling actions. Do things that feel good such as meditating, walking in nature, singing, dancing, yoga, interacting with like-minded friends, playing with your kids or pets, relaxing in a hot bath, giving or receiving a massage, appreciating a sunset, savoring a scrumptious dessert. Feel appreciation. A primary key to getting in your vortex is being in the state of appreciation. Focus on people and things you appreciate. And remember, please, the importance of appreciating yourself. Seek positive aspects. Set your intention to seek positive aspects in everyone and everything. Continuously find the most positive circumstances in your life and consciously direct your attention there. Tune your vibration. Tune yourself to the vibration of what it feels like to be living everything you desire now. Lean in the direction of that vibration and deliberately focus yourself there. Ask. When you activate a good feeling, milk it for all it's worth. Stay in that good feeling and practice the high vibration by fully savoring each moment of bliss. As you consciously decide to be in the delicious feeling of elation that is your vortex of creation, Everything you desire becomes a physical reality. By choosing increasingly better feeling thoughts, you are able to predominantly stay inside your vortex. Imagine the joy of being in the vortex, feeling good, flying high, and watching everything you desire unfold in the perfect way at the perfect time. It's all there waiting for you. Become a vibrational match to your swirling vibrational vortex of creation and experience the magic of the vortex now. About Kate. Kate Corbin is a masterful law of attraction coach and the author of three life-enhancing ebooks. Kate will inspire and motivate you to create a life positively overflowing with happiness, love, empowerment, freedom, vibrant good health, joyous relationships, and supercharged prosperity. Kate will encourage and support you in reclaiming your passion for life and fully revealing your magnificence. To discover how you can co-create with Kate to live your best life now, go to www.goldstarcoaching.com.